Call of Duty Modern Warfare is just a few months away, and while we haven't seen much of the game up to this point, we recently got a chance to go hands-on with Modern Warfare multiplayer. Is it more of the same, or a COD revolution? The truth is, it's probably somewhere in the middle, with big new changes to the game's engine, brand new modes, and new game mechanics, as well as tweaks to the existing multiplayer customization options. Modern Warfare feels like a game that has enough sense not to stray too far from its roots without being restricted by them. The goal here appears to be a Call of Duty game designed around realism and authenticity. As close as most players of the game will get to actual war combat, there's been an incredible attention to the little details in Modern Warfare, and they pay big dividends on the screen. It's instantly noticeable when you fire up a multiplayer match for the first time. You know you're in a Call of Duty game by the smoothness and the quick time to kill, as well as the general graphical style, but there's a level of detail found in different areas of the game that continually reinforce this realism to fully immerse you in the world. From small things like seeing the smoke bellow out of your weapon after you've emptied a clip into someone, or the sounds of shell casings bouncing off the cement below you, you're constantly being bombarded with the stimuli to keep the fantasy going. Regardless of which multiplayer mode you choose, returning favorites like Team Deathmatch, Domination, or Infinity Ward's spin on modes like Search and Destroy in a new game called Cyber Attack, it was pretty easy to fall right back into Call of Duty if you've ever played one of these games before. There was some getting used to here, especially when it comes to the feel of the game, as it does play somewhat differently than other Call of Duty games, but it was equal parts familiar and equal parts new and fresh. There were new gameplay ideas and mechanics that completely changed the way that you need to think about Call of Duty. There were old tricks that still worked. If Infinity Ward's task at hand was to give Call of Duty a fresh feel without making it not Call of Duty, they did it by adding things to the game without subtracting too much. Most of what's been added adds to the realism. Doors have been littered across the multiplayer maps that can be interacted with. They can be closed to add a layer of strategy for an opposing team to attack an objective or breach a room. You can blow them open with explosives or breach and clear it in multiple contextual ways. There are some interesting battle scenarios going on in each modern warfare map. You can shoot through walls with bullet penetration. You can see enemy laser sights which give away their position and who they're targeting. You can see in the dark with night vision goggles if you Need them. You can move around the map and get to unique vantage points by doing some exploration using parkour and mantle systems. All of these things have been in Call of Duty in some form or another, but not in the way that they are in Modern Warfare. While each of these things could have a lengthy explanation of how it changes Call of Duty multiplayer in some pretty drastic ways, they're all pieces of a puzzle that make up Modern Warfare and it gives it a unique feel to other Call of Duty games. Some of what we played felt very familiar to a traditional Call of Duty map. There were others that had a clear focus on structures being the key control points on a map instead of a choke point or a corner. Multiplayer in Modern Warfare runs the gamut of map sizes from the tiny 2v2 gunfight maps which pits two players versus two others in a first to six match of last man standing to massive 100 player battles in a revamped ground war mode. Modern Warfare will have the biggest competitive multiplayer maps that the franchise has ever seen and the most players in competitive multiplayer. While massive player counts are certainly welcome, it's still something that we'll need to take a closer look at as what we played did feel like it had a little bit too much downtime in between gunfights on these massive maps, which is unlike Call of Duty games, which are usually pretty good in getting you right back into the action. Things very well may still be in flux when it comes to a lot of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, especially in your creative class options. But from what we can tell, you're going to create your traditional Call of Duty loadouts in Modern Warfare. You'll pick a primary and secondary weapon, you can pick three perks in three different subclasses, and then you can pick your lethal and tactical grenades. Things then deviate a little bit further when it comes to your specific loadout as they've added the gunsmith as your primary differentiator in how you customize your character. The gunsmith allows you to add things like scopes, stocks, gun barrels, grips, and magazines to your weapon. It lets you pick five of these things to add to your gun or a gun perk and then head out onto the battlefield. What you choose can drastically impact your play, giving you faster aim down sight times, or faster sprint to aim down sights, or longer range, silenced weapons, or 
other combinations of buffs or nerfs to your abilities. Alongside the gunsmith, there are further customization options for your character, including which kill streaks you take with you. Yep, kill streaks are back, and I'm not quite sure exactly what to think of it. On one hand, kill streaks have the potential to turn modern warfare into a camper's paradise where everyone is hiding in a corner trying to earn their rewards. On the other, it's something that has worked for the series in the past. Specialists from Black Ops 4 are gone. Instead, players will have rechargeable abilities in the field upgrades section of a created class. These upgrades have differing timer lengths and they can be deployed on the battlefield during a match once they're charged. They most certainly do not have the same impact on a game that the devastating weapons of the Black Ops 4 specialists had. Like specialists, there are operators in the game, but I couldn't quite figure out what they were there for other than pure cosmetic options for you to use as character avatars. There were multiple factions of operators that you could choose as your character, but they didn't seem to have any abilities, weapons, or items attached to them. It could be a signal of where the monetization efforts are heading with Modern Warfare. It was announced that there wouldn't be a season pass for this game. Instead, all of the DLC released for the game would be free. It's hard to tell what types of monetization systems will be in place at this stage of development, but these operators could definitely be a sign of things to come or ways that the games will be monetized. There are still three months to release of Modern Warfare, and while things don't seem like they will change too much, they could. What we played was something that felt new yet familiar, something that was taking a different approach and layering some new ideas onto some old ones. For the shooter fan that may be looking for a more realistic experience or a more authentic combat simulation, go play Arma. For those that want something that pushes slightly in that direction while retaining the fast fun that the franchise is known for, Modern Warfare just might be it. But you don't have to take our word for it. You'll be able to try Call of Duty Modern Warfare when it heads to open beta in September on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC.